Video games are almost always about you. How are you progressing? What stage are you on? What level is your character? Planet Coaster is the first game that I can remember that feels like you should be focused on the game's inhabitants. Planet Coaster isn't really about making something cool that you like. It's about making something cool that the game will like. Planet Coaster is a game about building an amusement park with a focus on, you guessed it, building roller coasters and other track-based rides. Planet Coaster was created by Frontier, the studio behind other amusement park building simulators such as Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 and Thrillville. But they're probably best known right now for their open world space sim, Elite Dangerous. In Planet Coaster, you play the part of omniscient creator, building an amusement park up over time to make patrons happy. You're given a myriad of tools to create rides, stores, information booths, etc. The game has three modes available from the outset. Career mode gives you a partially built park and tasks you with building it up. Challenge mode asks you to build a park from scratch with some limitations. And sandbox mode only demands your creativity, with all other limitations lifted. The mechanics in each of these game modes are essentially the same. Gameplay can be segmented into three general parts. Park management, park construction, and riding the rides like a big kid does. That last one sounds like a joke, I know. Uh, I even said it in a jokey way, but it is an important part of the experience. But let's start by talking about managing your park. There's a park management tab down in the corner there. That tab allows you to hire and assign staff, change ticket and merch prices, and do other common managerial tasks. This tab contains information about your park, much like similar screens attached to the rides and stores you manage. And it's not a menial amount of information in those screens. It's like a lot of information. You can use heat maps to determine where a ride is scariest or most nauseating. There are graphs to rank your park's progress over time. You can determine which rides and shops are most profitable. You can determine which staff members have the heaviest workloads so you can hire more people to help. This is actionable data provided to you in real time as you play. So let's say you get a notification saying that your patrons need a toilet. Presumably, up until this point, they've just been holding it, or probably more likely just relieving themselves in some inappropriate area while their friends watch for security. That's an easy enough fix. Just go build a toilet somewhere, preferably in a high traffic area so it's easily accessible. Let's say you get a notification saying that you have a high rate of crime in your park. To fix that, you can hire more security, set up cameras, or you could just say to hell with it, because by this point you've probably gotten 5 to 10 notifications about individuals being pickpocketed and you can't be bothered. But hold on a second. Let's take notice of these examples, specifically how they started. In both cases, messages were sent to you because of problems that park patrons were having. In other words, you weren't notified because some background system in the game caught a problem with your park. You were notified because your patrons complained. The difference there is significant. Referring to the former example, the developers could have simply put in an if-then statement that restricted you from opening the park without a bathroom. However, in doing so, the developers are making a subjective, arbitrary decision for you. The player cannot open the park without a bathroom. In the security example, a piece of code could have been triggered when your park traffic reached a certain point to tell you that security should be increased. But that assumes, however, that increased foot traffic means increased crime which isn't necessarily the case. Instead, the developers are trusting that the patrons will provide you with that information, and you can use their comments however you'd like. Another example of this exists in the Park Management tab, where you are given several suggestion cards and percentages as to how many patrons agree. You can use this information to make choices about what your park looks like, or you can ignore it. That choice is yours. But those suggestion cards are not arbitrary. They're based on information gathered, conglomerated, and summarized from each individual park patron. To really hammer this home, I'll describe a fictional scenario and apply each solution to it. Let's say there are two identical chief beef restaurants on either end of a long midway. We'll call them A and B. Chief beef A is located nearest to the entrance, but is sort of secluded and out of the way. Chief beef B is furthest from the entrance, but is surrounded by rides and other restaurants. Which chief beef will perform better? If the developer is tasked with making that choice, there are only so many variables they're able to consider. 
when coding the game, they can't know where you've placed your other restaurants. They don't know how pretty you've made the restaurants or what else you've put in the area to affect park patrons' behavior. Instead, they can only choose a few known variables and base their decision on those. Besides having limited information to work with, developers have conscious and unconscious biases that will affect their decision. To succeed at restaurant placement, you'll need to know what those variables and biases are. But if you program your park's patrons to have a set of preferences and requirements, then release them onto a park, the answer to which chief beef will perform better becomes more obvious to the player. You can just watch your park patrons. Or, in the case of Planet Coaster, you can look at the data. You could argue that those park patrons are programmed with biases as well. In fact, that's a perfectly valid argument. But the results are consistent with a set of rules that you can witness firsthand instead of guessing what a few people believe to be true. In other words, if the developer codes in a quote-unquote correct answer to the question, the player is at the whim of the developer's understanding. Sussing out that understanding will require guessing or doing some research, after which you have to accept that they are correct, at least for the purposes of winning the game. But if the quote-unquote correct answer is determined by watching park patrons, then you can determine it in the game just by looking at data. You don't have to guess. You can just watch the behavior happening in front of you to determine what works and what doesn't. To me, that's impressive. Developers have been known to throw insane amounts of time, money, and energy at perfectly rendering immensely detailed video games to create what is commonly called a quote-unquote realistic game. I don't think that's realism. I think that's beautification. This system, to me, is what makes a realistic game. A game that exhibits behaviors congruent to those found in real life. Let's take a look at park construction. Planet Coaster also offers you plenty of tools to build your park into something you like. You have the ability to craft buildings from a variety of walls, roofs, decorations, and scenery. You can place objects using the simply named Move system, which allows you to roughly place objects on walls or on the ground. Or you can use the Advanced Move system, which gives you a translation slash rotation gizmo to help place items more precisely. You can swap between these two systems just by hitting the X and M keys on the keyboard. Building objects, like walls and roofs, can't be moved in this way, however, as those must adhere to a grid. The movement system in place for grid-based placement is a bit more clunky, but still useful. You can also build tracks for rides, which is... I mean, this is called Planet Coaster, after all. You can place each length of track yourself, or Planet Coaster provides you a set of pre-made track templates to help you build loops or twists. Essentially, you attach each track piece in sequence until you reach the other end of the ride. You also have to place brakes, pulleys, and things like that strategically to make the ride behave the way you want it to. But again, these things need to be built for your park patrons. They aren't for you alone to enjoy. Rides and shops should be plentiful so patrons don't get bored. Ride queues should be pretty so your patrons aren't hating their experience in a long line. And I have no way to prove this, but I suspect that your park should be aesthetically pleasing for the sake of the game. Roller coasters need to be a perfect balance of fear, excitement, and nauseating. Nauseation? Nausea. When you build a roller coaster, as well as some other rides, you need to test it before you can open it. This is practical since you're given absolute control over what the track looks like. You need to make sure it will perform as you expect it to. But the cool part is that you can test your newly created ride yourself. Like, you can sit in the seat and enjoy every twist, turn, and flip. You can do this with any ride, in fact. You can just click on the ride and switch to the ride camera. And it doesn't stop at the rides either. Planet Coaster allows you to walk the paths of your park. You can see your patrons' faces. You can watch your employees enjoying or hating their jobs. You can experience the park as a patron would. Planet Coaster could easily just fudge the numbers. It could have a series of requirements that, when fulfilled, mean you have a successful park. It could easily make those people on your midway nothing more than props. Frontier didn't have to give you the ability to experience the park yourself. They could have made zooming in 
limited. So you focus more on getting those success numbers instead of seeing the bright, smiling faces of your park patrons or the angry faces of patrons who have just been robbed, for that matter. But they didn't do that. Frontier has taken the time to make each park patron unique. Their looks, clothes, opinions, and pocketbooks are unique to each individual who walks into the park. Frontier has not taken a hand in deciding whether your park is good or not. They have decided to leave that to the AI of park patrons. Planet Coaster does not contain one single system that decides whether your park is successful or not. Instead, it employs hundreds of AI agents to examine your park and report back what they've found. Planet Coaster does not want you to simply build a park. It wants you to craft something robust and interesting. It wants you to craft something that you could and will enjoy walking. Planet Coaster is a unique experience for me. I enjoy building things in games, but typically the work that I do isn't reflected in how the game plays. In Planet Coaster, though, there seems to be a deeper relationship between my design choices and the game's reaction to it. My design choices aren't merely aesthetic, and my planning isn't a waste of time. Dan Pinchbeck of The Chinese Room once mentioned in a GDC panel that mechanics don't have to be sets of code, they can just be ideas that are planted in your head by the game. He was talking about a horror game, but I think Planet Coaster has done this as well. You can study your park patrons all you want, but there is no way of knowing all of the things they consider when they make decisions. In my case, that means making assumptions about what the park patrons want. And likely many of those assumptions just aren't true. But that's the beauty here. Without a static win state, you are at the mercy of your patrons. Not unlike a real amusement park, I'd imagine. This only took three times. Only. All right, that'll do it. So those are my thoughts on Planet Coaster. I think it's a really cool system. It's an interesting system on how to judge I don't know if it really judges success necessarily, because you can sort of just decide what your own success rate is. And I hope that other games use it. Do you agree? Do you think other games should use this? Uh, do you think that's actually a terrible system? Like maybe you have ideas of where it could be used to better other games. Let me know all of that stuff down in the comments. Also, questions, comments, concerns, all of that stuff. I. Let's have a talk about it. Let's discuss it. Let's just really hash it out. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the work that I'm doing, please subscribe, and I will talk to you folks 